Thank you for that great introduction. My name is McKinney Coburn Duval, and I am here to talk about bioavailability, bioequivalence site evaluation during the pandemic. By the end of my presentation, you should be able to describe the role of OSIS in the drug life cycle and explain how OSIS has adopted new techniques to accomplish the agency's mission in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. First, I will introduce you to OSIS share our mission and what we do, tell you about the alternative approaches that we took in the face of the pandemic, and give you some metrics. The Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance, or OSIS, is under the Office of Translational Sciences in CEDAR. Our office collaborates with ORA or the Office of Regulatory Affairs on inspections, as well as support the Office of Compliance, the Office of New Drugs, the Office of Generic Drugs, and the Office of Clinical Pharmacology within OTS. Our mission is to promote public health by ensuring the welfare of study subjects and by verifying the quality, study integrity, and regulatory compliance of bioavailability, bioequivalence, non-clinical, and animal rule studies. We support FDA's and CEDARS mission to protect public health by conducting comprehensive study directed and surveillance inspections of firms that conduct studies in support of human drug applications. In addition, we develop and refine strategies to improve inspection planning, execution, and evaluation and provide recommendations to CEDAR review divisions while focusing on human subject safety and data integrity. We also conduct outreach through participation in national and international conferences and workshops and collaborating with international regulatory agencies. Our mission can be summed up as select, inspect, report, support. We select sites for inspections through the surveillance evaluation and site assessment, inspect the sites to ensure quality and integrity of studies, report on the inspections, writing establishment inspection reports, as well as reviews, and support CEDAR with data reliability recommendations and compliance evaluations. So when we look at the inspection process, we first prepare for that inspection by distributing a workload and doing a very thorough comb through of the documents that have been submitted under the application to prepare for that inspection. We also may reach out to the review division to see if they have any concerns regarding the studies that have been submitted. This is followed by our arrival unannounced uh, to the site to conduct the opening meeting with the site and announcing the inspection. Next is the documents request where we inform the sites of what studies that will be reviewed during the inspection and request any additional documents related to the conduct of the studies. Next, we usually do a facility tour where we conduct a tour of the facilities and in, this could include sample receipt areas, sample storage areas, laboratories, clinical facilities, archives, server room, the like. Then we do a deep dive into the documents, reviewing all of those documents that are provided and discuss any concerns with the site, if any should arise. We also would collect exhibits at this uh, point during the document review. And then we wrap it up with a closeout, where we conduct a closeout meeting with the site. And if any observations are noted during the inspection, then we would issue the form FDA 483. 
So when we think about what do we cover during an inspection? Well, for instance, during the facility tour, we observe the facilities and site operations, including things like sample storage areas. We also would take a closer look at instrument and calibration and maintenance, data security. Are, are the systems and processes adequate to ensure integrity of the records? Also things like sample receipt and accountability. Are there sufficient records to recreate sample movement? And also reserve samples to see if reserves were retained and accounted for. We also take a closer look at the SOPs to see were the processes or procedures followed as described in the methods or SOPs. And training records to see were the firm staff properly trained for the designated activities. And of course, we look at things like method validation for precision and accuracy, stability, recovery, for instance, sample processing, sample analysis, as well as method performance audit trails and documentation. Uh, documentation also just to see are the processes and procedures properly documented to reconstruct study conduct. So now it is time for our first challenge question. What role does OSIS play in the drug life cycle? A, provide guidance and regulatory oversight to industry on a wide variety of clinical, scientific, and regulatory matters relating to generic drugs. B, conduct study directed and comprehensive surveillance inspections of firms that conduct BABE and GLP studies, sometimes with ORA investigators in support of human drug applications. C, conduct research to expand our knowledge of clinical pharmacology to better evaluate benefit and risk. Or D, protect public health by applying statistical approaches for monitoring the effectiveness and safety of marketed drugs and therapeutic biologic products. Take a moment to consider which answer is correct. If you selected option B, you are correct. Conduct study directed and comprehensive surveillance inspections of firms that conduct BABE and GLP studies, sometimes with ORA investigators in support of human drug applications. As a result of the COVID-19 global pandemic, routine on-site inspections were not possible due to travel restrictions from March of 2020. So all scheduled inspection travels were canceled to mitigate the impacts of the COVID-19 related travel restrictions on FDA's public health mission, OSIS moved quickly to develop alternative approaches to help support CEDAR's mission. In response to this challenge, between March and May of 2020, OSIS quickly developed the remote record review tool, which allows our office to review BABE and some GLP studies submitted to the agency in support of human drug applications, despite travel restrictions. The program was rolled out in June of 2020 and has continued throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Similar to on-site inspections, we review various aspects of studies as well as the facility. It is a voluntary interaction with the site of interest in support of applications and supplements. However, a failure of a tester site, testing site to allow OSIS to carry out this assessment may result in our inability to confirm the reliability of study data and ultimately result in our inability to approve an application relying on that study data. The remote record review are focused interactions to verify study related documents. As such, we audit source records and documentation, communicate with the site's staff, visualize electronic systems, observe certain areas of the site's facility related to the study, and identify, and any identified findings are then discussed during those virtual interactions. The remote record reviews are conducted in such a way that's comparable to on-site inspections. So in similar time 
and manner similar in scope and duration of interaction with the site. We look at the remote record review process and see there is a lot of similarities to the inspection process. There is still a planning phase where we uh, distribute the workload, but we also send out the first communication letter to the site uh, requesting uh, a remote record review of the documents for a particular study. We do a document request in letter two with attachment A that spells out the specific documents that we would like to see for uh, that study. Uh, once we receive all of those documents, we review them and then schedule an opening meeting with the site to conduct the remote record review. We do include a tour during that interaction um, and we tour some of the same facilities as we would during an inspection. We have discussions with the site through daily meetings and we address any questions or concerns that we have about our requested data and sometimes request additional documents. We then wrap up with a closeout meeting with the site and if we do have any observations or findings we will issue them and this is sent in written form in an email prior to closing out the, the remote record review. The remote record review is very similar to an inspection in the fact that we cover the same aspects, including facilities and site operations, drug product and subject sample accountability, reserve samples, SOPs, protocols, and protocol deviations, training records, method validation and sample analysis, method performance, audit trails and data security, instrument calibration and maintenance, documentation, and AE reporting, monitoring reports, and IRB IEC oversight for clinical remote record reviews. We use document sharing, read-only access to electronic systems, and video conferencing to discuss questions, concerns, and findings. If there are observations at the conclusion of a remote record review, we provide written observations. And there is still an opportunity for a site to respond to those obs observations. Most importantly, we're able to identify issues that may impact data reliability and subject protection. The findings uh, from an remote record review are intended to inform new and generic drug application decision making by assessing the reliability of study data submitted in support of an application. Now let's take a look at the metrics. To date, OSIS has conducted remote record reviews at 65 unique sites located in 15 different countries, supporting over 100 applications. Over 100 Under ANDAs, we see that we are, we are, they are 29 remote record reviews analytical, 18 clinical remote record reviews, five BLAs, seven analytical under NDAs, six clinical, totaling out at 41 analytical remote record reviews and 24 clinical remote record reviews. When we take a closer look, breaking it down by fiscal year, where we have inspections uh, in the blue color and for the remote record review, we have dark blue for the analytical and teal for the clinical remote record reviews. We see from fiscal year 20, although we did have the sudden stop of uh, travel, inspection travel, that we were able to almost batch figures with our previous fiscal year made up ex exclusively by inspections. For fiscal year 18, there were 75 inspections, 19 was 97. For fiscal year 20, it was 43 inspections, but then we made up a large portion of the difference uh, where we conducted 36 remote record reviews, 22 being analytical, 14 clinical, um, it primarily in that last quarter 
of fiscal year 2020. The rollout was in June and most of those remote record reviews were conducted in that last quarter from July to September. Um, and then when we take a look at fiscal year 21 so far, we have conducted 29 remote record reviews, 19 analytical, and 10 clinical. Time for our next challenge question. A remote record review is not like an inspection because of the following reason. A, it is voluntary. B, different aspects are covered. C, written observations are not provided. Or D, there is no interview with the site staff. Take a moment and consider which answer is correct. If you selected option A, you are correct. The remote record review is not like an inspection because it is indeed a voluntary process. In summary, OSIS's mission to promote the public health by ensuring the welfare of study subjects and verifying the quality, study integrity, and regulatory compliance of bioavailability, bioequivalence, and GLP and animal rule studies has been able to continue through our office's adaptation and innovation in the face of the pandemic. Due to the pandemic, we, it led to the development of the remote record review. This tool established by OSIS allowed us to continue to support CEDAR application assessments even though agency travel is restricted. And the metrics has shown that it does provide comparable outcomes to on-site inspections. In closing, despite the sudden travel-related restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, OSIS quickly adapted and applied innovation in order to persevere in the continuation of our important work to fulfill our mission of helping to ensure public health and safety. That concludes my presentation. Thank you all for your time and I will be back in the Q&A panel a little bit later to answer any questions that you have submitted.